Good morning everyone, I'm TJ and now I will show you how to set up a run on SOL 101 simulation of the bolted hinge that uh, was shown in a previous video. It's basically a linear analysis but due to the contact and the pre-tensioned bolts it will be a non-linear contact analysis. I will show you how to define the contact surfaces and how to apply friction and the basic idea here is to uh, um, apply enough um, bolt pretension uh, that the friction will avoid uh, shear loads to the bolts. Uh, so I will show you how to apply the bolt pretension and I will also show you how to post process the results to verify if the friction and the bolt pretension is sufficient to avoid sliding between the parts and shear loads to the bolts. So stay tuned. Here is the assembly fem that was created in a previous video. So what I will do now is first to go to the pre and post application and create a new simulation. I accept the default choice of file name and uh, OK. And then I specify SOL 101 because even if it's a linear analysis, it can include nonlinear effects uh, due to contacts, which I will have in this example. So let's see what I have to specify here. Executive control, case control. Uh, I think I will have to change some output requests. Gasket results, no glue results. Go to contacts, where are contacts? Model effective mass. There are contact results. I enable them, both traction and, and uh, pressure. Thickness, single point constraint forces, it's on. What else? I think there might be one for bolt loads. Applied loads, forces, enable force. Contact results are on, yeah. Then I accept the other choices. Okay. Then the first thing I could do is to apply the constraints. New constraint, fixed constraint, which I add to the bottom surface. There we are. Okay. So now I've con constrained the vertical girder in the lower end. The next thing is to go to simulation objects and I want to define the contact and then it defines surface to surface contact and I use this automatic pair function create face pairs and I just select all bodies press OK and then the system found three face pairs which I think is the right number then I need to define contact static contact friction because uh, when you apply bolt pressure the friction will avoid sliding between the parts and hence avoid uh, shear uh, forces in the bolts. So I specify what could be a common value 0 0.4 and um, the rest is okay. Now I can switch off the display of the finite element models just to verify um, my contact definitions and I want to change the size of the symbols here so I edit display and I make them a bit tinier okay and so now I can verify the different contacts and it looks like I got the right contact surfaces uh, then I specify the constraints strains and the contacts. The next, next thing I will do is to apply loads. And I will start with defining bolt preload, which are separate force entity. Forces on 1D elements. So let's first apply the load on the on the M20 bolts. And you see here that the selection is forces on 1D elements, so when I display them with the um, solid view, then it's easy to select them. 
and the pretension in these bolts are roughly 96,000 newtons. So I press apply. And you see these symbols telling me that the force is active, the f symbols are red. Then I want to apply contact on the M16 bolts. I think there are some more here. Okay. And the pretension there is 60,000 roughly. Okay, we see the red symbols. It looks like the pretension is applied in the proper way. Then, well, I could, of course, then switch on the FEM display again. No, I know that the pretension is okay. Then I want to s apply uh, a torque, not a torque. Uh, I would apply a moment because a torque has to be applied to a cylindrical phase. And I select the point there, which was created together with the RB2 element. Point in hinge. And then I want to define the torque in Newton meters. And the torque here, let's apply a load torque, which is uh, 70,000. Just to remind you that these numbers are quite artificial. They are not rep representing uh, what is applied to the to the real structure. And then in the direction I would say in minus x, that's okay. Here we see the, the torque symbol or moment symbol. So it's bend it downwards. The next load is force and I want to apply it in the same point. Point. And here I want to apply a uh, kind of shear load. Let's try 10,000. Ten and the direction could be vertical in the direction, yeah, minus y direction. So there we are. This is the load, which is pointing downwards, and the moment, which is bending the structure downwards. So then we are, I think, done. Uh, hopefully we have uh, selected all the output options, and I'm ready for the solution. Roughly half an hour later, and more than 20 iterations later, uh, we found a simulation or we found a solution where the residual forces are eliminated. And as you could see, um, the contact required a nonlinear formulation. And yeah, it's a quite demanding simulation. So if you want to reduce the combinational time, you could uh, replace the TET 10 elements uh, with TET 4 elements, uh, or you could lower the element size. Let's take a look at the results. Double click on structural and let's have a look at the von Mises stresses. And as usual, the deformations are scaled to 10% of the model size. That's okay by now, um, but let's uh, ch change the legend. Let's assume that the yell strength is roughly 250 megapascal. And here we see the stresses, we could animate the results just to verify that the loads look right and here we can see it's bending downwards which um, correlates well with the applied load and force or torque and the question is what happens with the contact and the bolt pretension will we have traction or not so let's stop the animation and we can have a look at uh, the beam forces, elemental nodal. And here we see uh, the forces in both the M16 and M20 bolts. 
and uh, we have to change the legend we use results what we notice is that um, the M20 bolts uh, originally they had a preload of 60 kilonewton no sorry 96 kilonewtons and now we can see the maximum load at the rear bolts are more than twice as much or uh, roughly twice as much and um, we can also tell that the yeah the f the the preload in the front bolts is yeah about the same as earlier perhaps reduced a little bit and uh, when it comes to the M16 bolts they had a preload of 60 kilonewtons and we see that the rear bolts it has increased by roughly 50% to 90 kilonewtons and in the front uh, they are reduced to probably in the range of 30 to 40 kilonewtons and uh, here on the vertical or uh, horizontal girder we see that uh, the pretension of the bolts or the tension has increased from 60 kilonewtons to roughly 90 and here we can see that the pretension has reduced from 60 to yeah, the min minimum uh, pre-tension here is 32 kilonewtons. So that means there are still tension in all bolts, but the question is what has happened with the pressure. So we double click on the scalar pressure and um, here we probably had to have to change the, the range or legend. We can specify it, let's use um, hundred or we could reduce it even more let's say 50 megapascal and we could use a very low number as the minimum and press apply um, here we see that the pressure is quite high in the lower end as expected and also in the front end here um, it's harder to tell in the middle here if the pressure has dropped to zero or not so let's try to change the scale we can use overflow here uh, we can use shaded and underflow shaded and apply and now we know uh, here we see that in this gray area the underflow tells me that there is no contact pressure anymore In the front there is a pressure and also on the upper end here it looks like we um, we have an um, underflow as well the dark area while the pressure is significant in a lower area but you can also tell from deformation that there has been some sliding and also some shear loads acting in the bolts uh, however, uh, we should have probably uh, not used only one beam element as a shank, but several in order to show how the distribution of shear forces is in, in, the, in each bolt. Because it's mainly in the contact area that you want to avoid shear. Because due to the connection between the RB2 threaded part, and the upper edge of the nut and uh, there will always be some share but we want to check out the share in this contact area okay so and uh, that concludes my presentation of this bolted hinge uh, I didn't use uh, really exact numbers for the loads and the pretensions, so that's why this um, bolted connection will not perform very well in the real life. But this is a demo, and now you know how to make pretension bolts and an assembly fem. Thanks for watching.